Boozed and Confused is a comedy and weird topic podcast. Adult language may be used probably by me. While our episode topics may be educational in nature, we are not responsible if your children start dropping the F-bomb to their kindergarten class. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hey, hi, hello. <laughs> Pretending like we weren't just hangry about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I think I'm still feeling some of the side effects. I am Carol Ann. This is Matt. Welcome to another episode of Boozed and Confused. Boozed and Confused. And this is a Carol Ann episode. And this is a I'm drinking episode. Yeah, it's not just water this I'm time. I'm just entertainment. Yeah. Um, before we dive into today's episode, we have some housekeeping. We do have some housekeeping. Don't forget to leave a review. <laughs> no. So we're on all your favorite social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can come hang out with us. I've been like a little bit more active on there. Um, yeah, I liked that Godzilla post. That was funny. That was funny. Tied in with the Titanic episode pretty nicely. A little too well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if social media isn't really your thing, you can send us an email at boostingconfusedpodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you, um, your creepy stories, your weird encounters, anything. Yeah, dank memes are cool. Yeah. If you want to email us memes, that's, yeah, that that's fine too. That's yeah. okay. Um, aside from that, um, what else? If you, <laughs> I know we do this every week. I just have to have a brain. Have the time, send us a review. Not just us, but anybody. Yeah. It helps the small <laughs> ones. Uh, Joe Rogan does not need your review. We do. <laughs> so we, yes, we don't have a Patreon because we don't have time, but mad respect to all of the um, people in our pod fam who do have Patreons because they have some pretty kick ass content. But. Um, if you want to support us, the best way that you could do that is by leaving us a review and um, following us or just, you know, subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, the best part is if you leave a review, you take a screenshot and you send it to us, we'll send you some Boost and Confuse stickers for free. For free. For free. And the last housekeeping item. What are you drinking? This is actually a gift from my brother and sister-in-law. Oh, that guy. Yeah, that oh, guy. That guy. That guy. Yeah, it was just his birthday the other day. He actually just got my gift, so happy birthday. <laughs> he just got it. But this is a this is a stout. It's a Left Hand Path. I think that's called Left Hand Left Hand Brewing. Uh, it basically smells like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Ooh. It's a peanut butter milk stout. Nice. That it's sounds... soy sauce. No, you wouldn't like it. No, I it, love it this stuff. It sounds really good, but I don't do stouts at all because they all just smell oh, very... So um, no, they taste very soy saucy to me. No. All right. Well, um, if that's it, I think we can get into it. That might be like the shortest intro that we have. Do you know what time it is? It's podcast time. No. It's 5.36. No. It's tax season time. Well, <laughs> you're in charge of the finances in this family, and that's is a very good thing. So, yeah, so yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, so it's tax season. Um, it's extended again because of COVID. Usually tax day falls on April 15th. Um, but reminder for anyone who hasn't done their taxes yet, they're due May 17th this year. I'll be sure and get right on that. At the, t- at the time yeah. of this recording, you've got less than 10 days. We got it. So We're good. Good luck. Um, so I know we have listeners from outside of the U.S. And with our current setup, um, the government knows how much we owe. People spend like hours. I think I read the average is like 13 hours <laughs> for someone to do their taxes. Maybe that's if you have like a more complicated setup. Um but people spend like hours going through their documents and forms and filling out, out all the information and 
And then we just hope that like the number that we get is right. Um, and sometimes we get refunds. Sometimes we owe money. Um, and it's all based on your withholdings, deductions, et cetera. Yeah. I've never not gotten money back on tax day. Yeah. And up until the last few years, I've always done it like the very last day on my dad's computer, Mm -hmm. like Quicken or one of those, one of those programs and just punch some numbers in. It's like whatever's on my, what is it? A W2. And then that's it. And then I get money and then I buy stuff. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's such a big thing here that people are like, oh, I'm going to use my (laughs) tax refund on X, Y, and Z. I've totally done that before. It's fine. Um, But have you ever wondered, like, why we have this set up? I know our cat does. He's definitely wondering (laughs) why. Apollo Apollo is definitely a tax dodger. Apollo hasn't paid taxes in probably 25 years. Oh, yeah. No, he has, like, three or four (laughs) offshores accounts. So it's super, super common um, for people to use some sort of tax software in the U.S. to get their taxes done. Um, There's a PC Mag survey last year that showed 58% of people who responded um, use TurboTax, 14% use H&R Block, 12% don't use any kind of software, and then like the remaining percentages um, are just like smaller programs or free programs that, that people can use. And depending on your financial situation, like it could be free for you to file your taxes. It could cost up to almost $350 if you need a little bit more help. Um, It just depends on like how complicated your financial situation is, um, the route that you take for help. You know, obviously DIY is going to be a little bit cheaper. If you have like a professional come in, it's going to be a lot more expensive. Um, And DIY packages can be anywhere from like $60 to $120, which if you think about like $60 $60 to file your taxes, it may not seem like that much, but then you kind of think about how many other people are paying $60 <laughs> to do your taxes. Um, yeah. So I'm willing to bet like a decent amount of people who listen to us in the U.S. Um, have probably used a tax program. I know. I know that we don't because we've got we got a guy. We got <laughs> we, a girl. Well, no, we have a guy because you have a bunch of 1099 stuff that is just. Oh, but I've never known I could write off all the things I buy. Yeah. Well, not all the things. All the things. And that's another thing. It's like the deductions that we have um, in a lot of countries, like you don't really get those deductions and it's kind of more unique to the U.S., which I think is very interesting. That was something new that I learned while I was doing research for this. But um, it's safe to say that companies like these make a shitload of money. It's a killing. Like an absolute ton of money. Um, And (laughs) one of my favorite quotes of all time, there are two things guaranteed in life. What are they? Death and taxes. Yes. 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 So with the current setup that we have, there's always going to be a need for people to like enlist in the help of these programs because our taxes are so complicated in the U.S. But it's not like this in other countries. Yeah, you told me this yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea idea either (laughs) until I started. I, I mean, I probably found out maybe within the last couple of years, but I thought this was like the norm. Um, And it turns out it's not. It's like a very, I wouldn't say U.S. only, but very unique to to the U.S. Um, But there are countries where you can just sign on to like a government page, right? And they tell you what you owe with like everything listed out. You literally just look through the numbers and like verify that everything is right. And then you press OK. Like it would take you more time to finish that beer than it would for you to like finish your taxes test me yeah (laughs) test me try or you could finish it really fast and taxes would maybe go by a little bit quicker and so i mean the the thing that like blows my mind about this is like there's no guessing you know there's like no heart palpitations wondering if you know if you get your taxes wrong if the irs is gonna audit you and then like come to your house i don't think they do that 
I don't know if they do that, but like maybe that's just my fear. And that's partially why we pay somebody else to do our taxes. Um, but it's like really just as easy as like confirming what the government tells you what you owe. That's amazing. Here's the crazy thing. Wait, it gets crazy? <laughs> we could have like a similar setup in the U.S., right? Well, then why don't we do it? We love doing things the easy way. <laughs> so the IRS already knows what we owe, right? And so why do we spend all this money and all these hours trying to file our own taxes? Or if you're like us and you pay someone else a good amount <laughs> to do the taxes for you because you have complicated taxes and you're afraid the IRS is going to come after you. Um, but it turns out we do this because good old government lobbying. Hmm? Government lobbying. Like the tobacco industry. America. Yeah, except it's not tobacco. It's Nestle. It's, <laughs> it's always Nestle. Uh, no, it's not Nestle. So it turns out the large tax software programs that we have in the U.S. have spent millions of dollars uh, in, I don't know, maybe the last few decades, lobbying the U.S. government against allowing the IRS to do this. Why would they do that? To get money? Yeah, money. Get it's, money. it's all about money. <laughs> so, so they're spending money to make money. Yeah, exactly. The amount that they put into lobbying is not comparable to the amount of money that they make every year. It's insane. And it turns out, obviously, if we didn't have the current setup that we have, these big software programs would lose a shitload of money uh, every year. There'd be a lot less people who, who would need those services. Here's something else that's crazy. Did you know there's actually already a free way to file your taxes if you're in like the low to middle income uh, brackets. No, no one's ever told me. Yeah, yeah, there's a good reason for that. So it's called the IRS Free File Program. Um, you could go to irs.gov slash free file. And uh, I'm just gonna like read a little quote from that page. The IRS Free File Program is a public-private partnership between the IRS and many tax preparation and filing software industry leaders who provide their brand name products for free. It provides two ways for taxpayers to prepare and file their income, federal income tax online for free. Traditional IRS Free File provides free online tax prep and filing options on IRS partner sites. Our partners are online tax prep companies that develop and deliver the service at no qual no cost to qualifying taxpayers. Please note, only tax pay Man, this is this is tricky. It's all that jargon. <laughs> it's okay. all that jargon. Only taxpayers whose adjusted gross income or AGI uh, is $72,000 or less qualify for any IRS free file partner offers. So you have to make below a certain amount in order to qualify for this. Um, and at the moment of this recording, um, there's nine large partners to offer you these free options to get your taxes done if you make under 72K. But in actuality, they say 72K. There's only a few partners that will do your taxes if you make up to that amount. Um, so in some cases, you have to meet under a certain income threshold to be able to use a certain partner. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you use taxact.com, you have to make under 63K and be under 56 years old. Um, but for freetaxusa.com, you have to make under 39K or less. And it also doesn't include free state returns. So, you would still have to file that separately. Mm -hmm. But why don't, why don't we know more about this? Why I, don't people know about this? <laughs> I hardly know even how to do taxes. <laughs> Um, actually don't even know what I make annually. <laughs> he's not, he's not lying. <laughs> um, I know that I, I get paid sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am, I am a very poor example of a feasibly responsible adult. Or maybe you're the example of like the average American Oh, their finances. If I'm the average, well, you know, no, no, no. I'm doing quite well in regards to like 
keeping the credit card balance low. Uh, student loans are like um, very responsible. I have a savings account. I have like three offshore bank accounts. You don't have any offshore bank accounts. That you know See, of. See, this is why the IRS is going to come to our house. I'm just kidding, FBI guy. <laughs> I mean, IRS guy. Mwah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right. So, so where did this free file stuff come from? Why don't more people know about this? Like the amount of people I'm sure who fall into that, that income bracket who probably still pay to do their taxes when they actually don't need to. Um, the IRS doesn't really have a huge marketing budget. Have you ever seen an ad from the IRS? <laughs> no, I just get phone calls from the IRS saying that I owe money and they're going to start putting me in jail if I don't do it soon. So I buy them gift cards from Amazon <laughs> or something. I give them money from Western Union. <laughs> and I haven't gone to jail yet, so it's been pretty successful. Yeah, it's been working out for you. Yeah. Um, right. So by working with the IRS, and I'm going to put that in very loose quotes, working with the IRS um, and offering a limited amount of users these free programs, these companies prevent the need for return free filing from the IRS. Does that make sense? No. Okay. <laughs> so no. pretty so pretty much these companies are like, well, see, we we work with you guys. We we work with the IRS to have options for these people who maybe can't afford or shouldn't pay to do their taxes. So like, no, don't worry about it, IRS. You totally don't have to like make your own program. Oh, and that's not to say that there haven't been like pretty recent revamped efforts to change this because it's a huge problem. Actually, a lot of this even goes back to like when Reagan was president. Um, the trickle down. Yeah, <laughs> it works. Yeah, it's going to get here someday. It works so well. Yeah, I'll 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 feel that trickle someday. So actually in 2016, Elizabeth Warren, who's very, very outspoken about like, we need to give the IRS more money. Um, you've probably heard her recently in the news talk about how the IRS needs to be revamped so that they can actually audit um, like large corporations and like very, the very wealthy so that they don't only audit no, no, people no, no, like no. us. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you shouldn't be punishing the rich for being rich that's it's not their fault that they're so let's, wealthy let's punish the the You're, poor for being poor instead <laughs> no it's it's no it's equal it's equal. yeah totally 25 percent. yeah right 20 percent, 16 12 percent, 10 percent. what is what are, what numbers are you quoting right now tax numbers <laughs> yep these are yeah these like are numbers 10 percent tax yeah cook county tax sugar tax uh-huh 10 uh-huh yeah so anyways so in 2016, Elizabeth Warren proposes um, the Tax Filing Simplification Act of 2016. And this would have pretty much directed the IRS to launch a return-free program, which is like the end goal for this. And this bill actually got a ton of support. So it was endorsed by like law professors, economists. Um, it was co-sponsored by other um, senators. So like Bernie Sanders, you know, was probably like first in line, um, but also had support from people like Al Franken, Tammy Baldwin. And um, uh, as you could probably guess, it didn't get very far. Was it shot down in the Congress? <laughs> so the the private tax prep industry lobbied against this bill and because they would rather people keep using the free file program that they have um, instead of extending like pre-filled forms to all of these taxpayers uh, yeah her her bill did not make it out of committee has she tried again um yeah well may maybe because I feel like if she tried to pass that bill now I think seeing how the times are changing yeah I think that would pass yeah um, so here's the other crazy thing. I know I've said that a lot, um, but this free file program only used by like 2.6 million people annually. That's like an average number. Um, but there's as many as like 63 million American taxpayers who could like actually 
benefit from these programs. So that's cool. So there's an NBC News article that I've linked in the show notes um, that I'm going to read a quote from, but it just talks about how these companies spend millions lobbying to um, keep themselves kind of in power uh, and have like this offset of a a power struggle (laughs) with the IRS. So the Free File Alliance uh, argued the Tax Filing Simplification Act was anything but simple. They said it would create a tremendous and potential harmful conflict of interest for the American people by enshrining roles of tax preparer, tax collector, tax auditor, and tax enforcer together in one entity. That's why they said no. That sounds like a lot of barnacles. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I'm saying. Um, And even as recently as a couple of years ago in 2019, these private tax companies have gotten in trouble for charging users to file their taxes when, like, they technically should be free under that free file program. Right. Yes. Yeah. And so this is from ProPublica, which actually they've done a lot of auditing and reporting on this sort of thing. Um, Highly recommend. I have another ProPublica article in the show notes if this is interesting to you at all um, and you want to read a little bit more about it. But so from ProPublica, more than 14 million taxpayers paid for tax prep software last year that they could have gotten for free, according to a scathing audit released Wednesday by the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. The, um, that amounts to roughly a billion dollars in revenue for these companies. That's why. Yeah. What what incentive do they have to be like, oh, you make under a certain amount? We have a free program for you. <laughs> because they just make so much money from people using their programs. Um, yeah, that's just good business. Going to add to that, around 104 million taxpayers were eligible for free file last year, according to the audit. Of those, just 2.4% actually used the free government program. Yeah. Again, I've never heard of this until you mentioned it. Um, so what's happening is like these companies are just banking on the free file program, loose quotes, and then, you know, getting it into law would pretty much like close the door on the IRS ever mm-hmm. actually making their own, um, you know, free tax filing system. <sighs> Lobbyists. To make matters worse, <laughs> um, some of these companies have actually gotten in trouble for um, removing some of their pages that would direct to the free file uh, from showing up on Google. So for example, if I go to Google and I search for um, free tax filing, I might get ads for some of these companies, but I'm not going to get any results from these companies that would direct me to the free file pages. And uh, these companies got a big slap on the wrist uh, a couple of years ago because this was found out and it was found to be a little bit predatory. Um, so now they have to re-index their pages on those search results. And uh, yeah, that's that's why <laughs> we all have such a complicated tax system in the U.S. when it comes to doing our returns. It that's, was complicated yeah. when I was like a high schooler learning this. It's actually a really good class. Like like my favorite teacher ever, Mr. Manella, legend, <laughs> legend, uh, taught us all about money stuff, and we had to like file our taxes for like a final exam or something, and it was the hardest thing because like he gives all the information, and I'm still that person who has no idea where things go and. I mean, I can follow directions, but I'm, I would pay someone. I would pay someone. Just We do, we do pay someone. I know. We, <laughs> we do. We do. And they're great. And they're great. But I'm also, I'm becoming more aware of what, you know, like my driving hours for uh-huh. my other stuff, my little side grind. Your 1099s. Yeah. I'm tracking all of my driving. Yeah. And again, like that, that, those kind of deductions, like, don't really exist in other countries. Pokemon cards? Yeah. That's a deduction. Yeah. Um, a new pair of soccer cleats? Deduction. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Did you say Pokemon cards? What? No. <laughs> um, something else. I don't have this in the notes, so I don't have the exact number on hand. But um, something else that I thought was really interesting was 
compared to other countries, um, America has such a low tax rate. Um, where you hear about some countries, their taxes are up to like 40% of their income. However, (laughs) Americans complain (laughs) almost the most about their taxes, despite having one of the lowest uh, tax rates in the world for like a, what what you may call like a, what, like a leading nation. What are we leading in? I don't know, sucking. (laughs) Baseball World Series, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. We don't have much else going for us, I don't think. There's the NFL. The Buccaneers. Yeah. They want a NFL yeah, technically. thing. What if the, what if the NFL just goes to England to like play a game and then they're just like, you know what? I think we'll stay here. <laughs> Do they want to stay in London? In it? In it. <laughs> in it. Gosh, I'm sorry to our English listeners. Everyone except Lacey. Yeah. But he's not listening. So <laughs> No, it's fine. So yeah. I don't I don't have anything else. Um, there's like a whole rabbit hole you could go down for this if you wanted to learn a little bit more. But um I just wanted to keep this like kind of a little bit higher level of just how uh this even came to be and why our taxes are set up the way that they are. Well, you know, honestly, I think if you want to look at any say like not corrupt. That's kind of like a you know like a heavy word, but kind of like shady thing. The answer is lobbyists. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's there's yeah. lobbying for like everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Walt Disney has um, certain lobbyists as well. He has a lobbyist who is trying to make it cheaper for the prices of ice. Why does <laughs> like every other episode comes back to you thinking Walt Disney is? His on head's ice. on ice. Yes, yeah. he's alive. He has he has a robot body that is like attached at his neck, and he's yeah. been kept alive for decades. Yeah. Him and Lou Gehrig. No, not Lou Gehrig. Is it Lou Gehrig? No. Oh, it's not Lou Gehrig. Um, it was a famous baseball player who played for the Red Sox. Ugh, I don't know. Well, I know you don't about know sports history. I mean, but he, he recently passed away. And by recently, I mean like within the last 20 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally. Probably closer to like 10, 15 years, whose, I believe, head was removed and frozen. Oh. Yeah, okay. I think it'd be dope if you take a bunch of like athletes and then, you know, when they pass away eventually, take their heads and put them on robot bodies and you can have like retired. What in the dystopian hell is that? No, no. And if you lose, you get turned off. <laughs> God, no. I think I'm good. Thank you. I don't I don't want to think about that anymore. I'll find the right lobbyist for it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, if these politicians can be bought, well, this is never going to change. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could. I, I think a lot of us could be bought for certain things. Like, I think Matt could be bought for, like, $2 for certain things. If you give me a beer and, like, a solid handshake and say thank you, I'll yeah. probably do anything you want. Yeah. Yeah, not me. I'm unwavering. You do it for a hot dog. I would probably or do like it an for Oreo. A, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I I would do it for an Oreo probably. But yeah, I, that's that's kind of it for today. Um, enjoy doing your taxes, or if you pay somebody else to do them, I'm glad that that stress and burden is off of you and onto somebody else whose job it is. Yeah, it's a nice luxury. What, what, to not have to worry to about? To worry about oh, taxes, yeah. just pay yeah. someone to do it. Comes at a hefty price. <laughs> but at least I don't have to worry about the IRS showing up at my house, so, yeah. But if they keep calling you, um, <laughs> keep sending them gift cards. Yeah, just just to make sure. Um, yeah, so, uh, just like a PSA, if you make under $72,000 a year in the U.S. and you got to do your taxes, uh, irs.gov slash free file. Uh, has some good resources for you so that you can do your taxes for free you don't have to pay if i had known this years ago yeah years ago i could have used this yeah Mm. so alrighty. well hope everybody enjoys doing their taxes hope you enjoyed this feels like a mini episode um and it feels like a a different kind of episode maybe because there's no aliens (laughs) there there's corporate (laughs) conspiracies which is really my thing but they're the true villains in this world, <laughs> the corporations. All righty. Well, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. 
provided I don't have a baby sometime oh, in between now and then. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that yet. We're gonna we're gonna we talked about recording episodes just to have in the queue, um, just in case, you know. No, but. I'm fully prepped and ready to bring on like guest speakers and we'll talk about And you're not gonna know anything. how to post them. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. We got this. Alrighty, well I'll see you guys next week. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.